Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and uh, another uh, review video. This time we are going to review the trapezoid rule with an accumulation problem. This is typically how you'll see the trapezoid rule presented on an AP test. It'll be in, in the middle of a problem that deals with accumulations, and you might have to determine if there's an overestimate or underestimate. So let's take a look at here what we have. On this problem, it says... The post office delivered letters between 7 a.m., we're going to call that t equals 0, and 5 p.m., let's call that t equals 10. If you uh, work it out from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., you'll see that it that is 10 hours. And then the number of letters delivered t hours afternoon is modeled by this differentiable function, uh, L, 0, less than or equal t, less than or equal to 10. L double prime of t is greater than 0 for all t. Values of L of T and thousands of letters at various times in the tables are shown below. Okay, so they are telling us that the second derivative is greater than zero. And that is important because that's going to tell us about the concavity of this and that it's always concave up. Okay? So what I like to do when I look at tables like this and I see that it's an accumulation problem, I like to quickly just draw a quick sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. What you are doing is you are just letting yourself kind of get an idea of what's happening. So we have zero, I'll put some points here. At time zero, we've got the point zero. At three, we've got 1,000 letters. So we'll go one, we'll just call this three. We'll put that there. At seven, we've got 4,000 letters. So we'll say 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll put that up there. At 8, we've got 5,000, so we'll put 8 right there. We'll go up one more. And the next one is at 10 right here. We have 9,000. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're just going to approximate that. Since it is increasing... Right here, we know that. And the second derivative is greater than zero. It's concave up. So that means I can just quickly connect these with something that's going to look like this. Again, it doesn't have to be. This is telling me that it's continuous since this, we can take that derivative. But anyway, I'm just connecting these just so that we are taking a look at what's happening. And that's what's happening. So now, in the second part, it says, use a trapezoidal sum with four sub-intervals given by the table to approximate the integral from 0 to 10 of L of T dt. Does this approximation overestimate or underestimate the actual value from, of the integral from 0 to 10 of L of T dt? Give a reason for your answer. So we can set this up with the trapezoid rule, and it says four sub-intervals. So this one is kind of works out just fine, because if I connect these, you'll notice I will end up with these four trapezoids. Here's trapezoid one, two, three, and four. So I'll end up with each of those four trapezoids. Now, this is the base times the height. These are the two bases. There's the height. Two bases right here, the height, etc. Because remember, we said they're like trapezoids standing up. So over here, let's go ahead and use our trapezoid rule. And remember, for the trapezoid rule, this is one half times your height, which we are going to call our delta x, times base 1 plus base 2, oops, base 2, and this is going to be like our f of x's. So f of x1, f of x2, etc. Okay, so we said it was f of x i, f of x i plus 1, and that's what we, when we initially learned it. So let's take a look at what we have here. So breaking this down, we're going to say this all equals, so we're looking for the area here, right, underneath all that, and this is going to be delta x, and this will be f of x0 plus f of 3, okay, there's your height, and there's your base, plus delta x, and this time we'll have times f of 3 plus the f of 7 plus delta x times f of 7 plus the f of 8 
plus delta x times the f of 8 plus the f of 10. Now, one other thing I forgot to put, put the 1 half out in front because of the 1 half in our formula. Okay, now, some of you are saying, well, why can't you just take the delta x out? Well, we can't do that. And the reason why we cannot just take a delta x out in this particular problem is because these spaces right here are not evenly spaced. This is a delta x of 3. This is a delta x of 4. From 3 to 7 is a distance of 4. From 7 to 1 is a distance of 7 to 8 is a distance of 1, and 8 to 10 is a distance of 2. So all these delta x's that you see in here, delta x1, delta x2, delta x3, delta x4, are different. So we cannot do what we have done in the past and say, oh, delta x times f of 0 plus 2 f of 3. We can't set it up quite that way because these delta x's are different for each one. So I put it the whole long way like we did here and wrote the whole thing out. So now we'll substitute those values. So our first delta x we said was 3. And then our f of 0, we look at the table, f of 0 is 0. Plus f of 3, I look at the table, is 1. Next, I'm going to get f of our delta x, which will be 4, and f of 3, which is 1, and f of 7, which is 4, plus our next delta x is 1, and our <clears throat> f of 7 is 4, and our f of 8 is 5, plus our next delta x, which is 2, and then our f of 8, which is 5, and our f of 10, which is 9. So now let's work all this out. Let me move this up a little bit. I'm going to move it up to here, and... Let's see what we end up with. Over here, we'll end up with the area equals 1 half. And this comes out to be 3 plus 20 plus 9 plus, and this will be uh, 28 when you work all these out up above. And that gives me 1 half times uh, 60 which will be 30, and this is 1,000 letters. So it's 30,000 letters. All right, is this, we got to answer the next part now. Is this an overestimate or an underestimate of the actual value, and how do I know? All right, let's take a look at this. I'm going to look at this important thing that I highlighted earlier. And I said, right there, L double prime is greater than zero. And I told you that this meant that it was concave up. Since this is concave up, if you imagine all these as being concave up, concave up, what am I creating here if these are concave up? I'm creating a little gap. If you zoom in right in here, I'll be creating, let me see if I could do it on this, you see how there, I get a little gap in between each one. And so since I'm creating that little gap, I've found the area that includes that little gap. So I've created an overestimate, right? Because let's zoom in on one of them. Well, we could zoom in on a couple. Suppose I have this situation like that, and I found this full area, right? I found the full area, but I don't want this. So I found too much. So I came up with an overestimate, and it was all based on this fact that they told us that L double prime was greater than zero. All right, let's look at the next part of this problem. And the next part says... What does your answer for part A represent? Well, what does it mean? What did we just do? We found an answer of 30,000 letters. Well, this means that the, this is the approximate number of letters delivered from that 7 a.m. mark Oops, that's 7 a.m. mark 
to the 5 p.m. mark. So that's the approximate total number of letters that we delivered from that time period. And then the next one says, write an equation for the average number of letters delivered from 7. Next, find the average based on your response from part A. Well, this is an average value function. We've been, we've, we just learned what an average value function is. And the average value function is you're going to take what you're doing and divide it over the interval. So in other words, we want 1 over b minus a from the interval from a to b of f of x dx. Remember, that's the average value. So in our case, we ended up with, this is 1 over, and this is a 10-hour period. So we're going to say from 10 minus 0, because that's where they gave us the L of, uh, L of 7 o'clock uh, would be 0, and our 5 p.m. would be 10. And then we have our equation, which was 0 to 10 of L of t dt. So write an equation. Here's my equation. This equals the average. All right, now use this. So how are we going to do this? Well, we know 1 over 10. We found this answer in part A, which was 30, and that gives me 3, 3, uh, and these are 1,000 letters per hour. And that's our answer for that one. Let's move this up. And next, find the average response. We found that. And... Um, I want to go back, and since we're covering this, I want to talk about something when we're using um, the trapezoid rule. All right, so let me, little little teaching here. Let's go on to this page, and let's, uh, let's write this down. All right, so here's what we got for the trapezoid rule, and we're going to write this down, a little, little bit of notes. For, I can't write. Let's erase that and rewrite it. And I know some of you are deciding, oh, what color is he going to use? Well, I'm going to use a black color right now because we're doing notes. So for the trapezoid rule, here's what we're going to come up with. If we have something increasing, so increasing and concave down. So this means f prime of x is greater than 0 concave down f double prime of x is less than zero, we are going to get an underestimate. What does it look like graphically? Well, graphically we have something like this, right? Here's it's increasing. And now we've got something that's concave down like this. So that's what we have. Next, we can say, what if it's increasing and concave up? So increasing and concave up. Well, here's increasing, but this time I'm concave up. I'm going to do that. So this means f prime of x is greater than 0, concave up f double prime of x, is greater than zero. This will give me an over estimate. Next, what if we are decreasing and concave down? Decreasing and concave down. Well, decreasing f prime of x is less than zero. Concave down f double prime of x is also less than zero. Let's draw the situation. We are going to be decreasing. So from here, I'm going to go down to the next point, And then I'm concave down. So I'm going to connect these like this, concave down. So this will give me an under estimate. So the trapezoid rule counts and doesn't count all of it. So I have this because, I, again, like we said with those gaps, I have this gap right here. All right, and let's do that last one here where this is going to be decreasing and concave up. I can spell concave. I know I can. So this gives me f prime of x less than 0, f double prime of x greater than 0. 
So decreasing again, we're going to put our two marks. We're going down, but this time it's concave up, so I have this little smiley face like that. And this time you can see that this will be an overestimate. Well, what does that tell us? Well, graphically, these are the situations that you'll come across. One way to remember it is if you have a part of a happy face. Look, over here on this side, these are happy faces. That's a happy face up here. This is a happy face on this side. So any part of a happy face like this, you will get an overestimate. So happy, happy face equals overestimate. Sad face equals underestimate. So you're going to frown, and it's going to be an underestimate. So either part, remember, the concavity will change at this point right here. So either part of the frown will give you an underestimate. Either part of the happy face will give you an overestimate. So that's what you can think of it graphically. So always refer back to these notes uh, while you're doing the problems, uh, when you're practicing your AP uh, test problems, and um, especially for trapezoid rule and for over and under estimates. All right, I hope you liked it. Uh, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. Let's, uh, let's get this going. All right, talk to you later.